Hi, my name is Chai. I am 21. I identify as a bisexual cisgender woman, and my preferred pronouns are she, her, don't really care. <laughs> Growing up, it was really weird because my family, like, I grew up primarily with my grandparents and my dad. My grandparents are very homophobic or at least they were, especially when I was growing up. I grew up in San Diego, um, which means that when Prop 8, the whole anti-gay marriage deal came up, I was around 10 and I was basically being spoon-fed Fox News ideology of what's right and wrong with sexuality. So I always just was told being gay or bi or anything like that was wrong. So I had a lot of thoughts like, oh, this girl's really pretty, or, oh, like, I really want to be her friend. And then I kind of grew up and realized that those thoughts were early indicators of my sexuality and identity that I was just deeply suppressing because my family would not have accepted it and I was too young to understand that being gay or bi was even an option since my family was so vehemently against it. I remember being maybe six or seven and thinking that my best friend was really pretty and like wanting to kiss her and stuff and we would like pretend, <laughs> this is so sad, we would pretend we were each other's like elementary school like boyfriend crushes and like kiss. And I loved it. I don't think she did because she is now married to a man. But anyhow. <laughs> um, and then like I got older maybe like 13, 14 and that was when like I stopped going to church with my family and I started meeting other people that were queer and I kind of I think that was probably around the, the year I realized that I could be different. And then 15 was when I accepted myself for who I was and I had my first girlfriend. I went to public school so um, there were like gay people and especially since I lived in California at the time there were a lot more um, people with liberal views and things of that nature that allowed their children to be gay or bi or trans or whatever. Um, and that was where I learned that that was even like, possible other than my grandma saying that gay people were disgusting. <laughs> I would probably have to say my favorite memory since coming into myself as a queer person would probably be the first time I went out to a gay bar. I went to a show and I was with my friend China and I realized that even though I was a cis woman, people in queer spaces still acknowledged the art I was doing. There's a little hair in front of my face. Um, <laughs> that, like, it was, it was just really cool to know that like other queer people respected me, even though I'm very straight passing and acknowledged my drag and the art that I do. It just made me really happy to know that there were other people in the community supporting me. The first time I was an exaggerated woman, <laughs> what? That's what I call my drag. I call my drag being an exaggerated woman because I don't dress like I do in drag every day. That's where I have issues with like people saying AFAB queens aren't valid. It's like, do you think I walk around wearing like sequin gowns and giant hair every day? Of course not. The first time I did drag was a super hot mess. I was looking at a picture of Trixie Patel. That, that already tells you it was a hot mess. I did the under eye shape completely wrong. Everything was just out of line. I had these little Amazon padded shorts instead of pads. <laughs> and I think I was just wearing like a plain black dress that I wore out of drag. It, it just, nothing was cohesive. Like the makeup style with the hairstyle with the outfit I was wearing, none of it matched. My eyebrow cover was bad. I shaved my eyebrows the next time I did drag because I realized it didn't work. And it's definitely archived on my Instagram because it was a sad, sad moment. <laughs> what is the first makeup item you remember wearing? Um, I was 12 and I convinced my grandma to convince my dad to let me wear makeup because I was coming into my emo phase and I wanted raccoon eyeliner. So I had to beg my grandmother to get me eyeliner. When she finally did, they restricted the amount I could wear and I remember going into the bathroom at seventh grade, or in seventh grade at six in the morning when my dad dropped me off and raccooning the hell out of my eyes. And I used to keep makeup wipes in my bag so I could take it off. Tell me about coming out. Who did you tell first and what was their response? This is actually a funny story. When I was probably 14, 
my dad was married to this woman at the time. Um, we'll call her my stepmom, really even though mom. she isn't currently. <laughs> and um, they had seen something I had posted on my Instagram vaguely mentioning being interested in women. Like, it was the vaguest comment, and it was like a year before they had even addressed it that I had made the comment. Maybe not a year, that's a little dramatic. But they called me into their bedroom, and they told me that they knew that I was bisexual and that they researched bisexuality. And I was really caught off guard by the fact that they were so supportive, even though I had been hiding it from them. I mean, at first it was obviously I felt very interrogated. They were like, we know what you are kind of a deal. But they told me immediately that it would never affect our relationship and they would they weren't going to tell my grandparents and they were very supportive. And then when I got to choose to come out to my grandparents, um, I think I was 18. Yeah, I was 18 because I had just started dating my ex at the time. Um, and I had to tell my grandma that I was dating a woman because I wanted her to meet my girlfriend. So we were sitting in the kitchen. I was sitting on the counter just like we always do. She was cooking dinner and I just told her, hey, I'm dating someone and I want to tell you about them. And she said, okay, what's his name? And I said, her name is, I'm not going to say it, but, um, <laughs> and we just had a good conversation. She wasn't, she is not accepting of LGBTQ+, however, she loves me and will always love me, and that was what she told me. She said that she had had her suspicions for years because I had girlfriends that I hid from her in high school, and she kind of said it wasn't a surprise, honestly, and that they had kind of had their suspicions all along, and they weren't upset. So that was a little a small victory for me, I feel like, because of my family being so homophobic. I don't remember the first conversation I ever had with someone about my sexuality, but I do remember very vividly the first conversation I ever had with someone regarding doing drag as a cis woman. Um, I was, me and my ex were hosting a New Year's party, and my lovely friend China was invited because her and my ex had gone to high school together. Um, I had always been fascinated with drag since I was maybe 12, 13. I had always watched RuPaul's Drag Race and done my, like, my little external research into drag and I really loved it but I had no clue that there were other women that did it. I had heard about it but I had heard it was super taboo and you know the the actual the actual drag queens anyway um they hated you know cis women doing drag so I just never even considered that as an option for myself and me and China were talking and I remember she was telling me about her drag and I said God, I wish more than anything that I could do drag. And she said, well, why don't you? And I said, well, it, that's against the rules. Like, I can't do that. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm a woman. And <laughs> I remember her kind of just laughing at me and being like, well, there's a huge online community for all kinds of performers and different styles and different takes and different perspectives of drag. And I think literally the next day I did drag because she gave me a wig that night. <laughs> so that was the first conversation I ever had that opened my eyes into the world of AFAB queens. I've never had any problem with my friends. Like I've never had to come out to my friends. I've never had to explain why I do drag to my friends. I think the only friend I've ever had to explain it to is just like a straight dude. And like, that's fine, I get that. But even with him it wasn't that hard because his uncle does like drag art and stuff. So. All of my friends have been really receptive and understanding and loving to the fact that I'm bisexual, that I do drag. All my friends follow my drag account, all my friends support my drag. I've, some of my friends are actually like amazed at what I'm able to do because they've seen me try to express myself through different artistic platforms and I just don't think that I articulate myself the same way that I do in, because I've done photography, I've done digital art, I've done physical art on like, you know, pen and paper and nothing translates the way that drag does for me. So all my friends have been really loving and supportive and I have friends that come out to my shows. Um, most of my like core friends all live in California still, but I know if they were here they would be at my shows. My actual process of beginning to do drag 
I did a few looks without being in competitions, I did a few little projects, and I wasn't satisfied, I wasn't fulfilled. I needed a push, so I went on Instagram and the whole drag race, Instagram community, whatever the hell, and I joined like two, three, four competitions, pretty much all within the same three, four months. And just for those of you who don't know, there are a lot of like online Instagram competitions, there's even like YouTube competitions, things of that nature, that are just smaller versions of drag race that are altered in certain ways. Like there's, um, there's like Queen's Purgatory, which is a really great Instagram platform for drag queens. Just a little shout out. But um, I did Queen's Purgatory, I did Drag Deviants, which is a competition I now host. I did Madison Drag Race. I've done a lot of different competitions. I'm currently even competing in Drag Showdown, which is a YouTube competition. But that was where I got my start, which was nice for me because I was able to get specific things assigned to me and have to get creative. Because when I was just starting off on my own, I was just doing things that like, I was just pulling from my female closet and using it for drag. And like, that's something I don't really do at this point because it felt uncreative and nothing felt special. And once I started doing drag on those platforms, it started to feel a lot more special. I, I remember the first time I ever felt creatively confident with a look I did, it was for Queen's Purgatory. It was, I think the first week and we had to do a look inspired by our greatest fear. When I first started doing competitions, I wasn't doing as well as I wanted to. First competition I did, I placed fourth, which isn't bad, but that was just, I wanted to win. Um, the second competition I did, I was the runner up, which I wanted to win, but I was still happy with my progress. The third competition I did, I was also the runner up. So it was kind of getting to the point where it was a little repetitive. Fourth competition I did, I was a runner up. It really started to hurt, but the biggest milestone I personally was able to achieve was winning Queen's Purgatory All-Stars. In my original Queen's Purgatory season, I placed fifth or sixth. I really didn't do that well. And then I came back for All-Stars, everybody had really low expectations, and I won. So that was when I really felt like I could do anything with my drag. Did starting drag notably affect your dating slash sex life? <laughs> yes and no. Um, I was in a relationship when I started drag and my partner was very supportive of my drag to an extent. Um, he didn't like messes, but that's because he's an annoying jerk. Anyway, um, but drag has affected the way that I feel about myself. So I think it affected the way that I acted in that relationship. And I think the newfound confidence that I had was too much for his small ego to handle. And I kind of, I don't know, I grew in ways that weren't being accepted. And now my partner is another drag queen, which is something that is really great for my dating life because it's something where there's mutual understanding. So I guess drag has impacted my dating life because there are a lot of people who don't understand the requirements of drag, people that don't understand the, I don't know, what it takes to do drag and appreciate someone who does drag without being upset in a way. So it's just, it is really nice to know that um, I'm able to find a partner so special and unique as mine, but I think that dating now as an established performer, dating someone who wasn't a performer would be really hard. I have really struggled my whole life with feeling like my authentic self. When I was younger, as like a child, I felt the need to lie about things. Like my, you know, family was under the impression that I was super religious. My family was under the impression that I was straight, that I wanted to, you know, have a traditional nuclear family someday. And growing up and realizing that that wasn't authentic for me, it was hard for myself to learn how to adjust to that. And um, now that I am living on my own, completely alone, I think the past year of my life is when I started being my full authentic self. I've been able to grow over the years. Like in high school, um, you know, I started dressing more authentically how I wanted to dress. 
and I came out as bi to my family or you know they came out to me that they knew <laughs> and um that was like the start of my authenticity growing but I think now that I live completely alone in my own apartment in an entire state away from my family I'm able to do drag as I want perform as I want and I have a relationship that uplifts me and supports me I think now I'm finally living my most authentic life are there any words you find offensive? I don't think so. Um, I am the kind of person that doesn't let things people say really hurt me. Um, I know that there are terms that are offensive to AFAB performers. I know that bio queen is really, can be a very touchy term. Personally, I don't care because I, I know that people aren't, usually coming from a place of negativity. I don't think there's any slur that someone could say to me that would genuinely hurt my feelings. I've been called a I've been called a I mean, I'm not in any way masculine, but I've been called a I've been called all the names under the sun, and I don't think any of them personally hurt me, but I understand that they can have hurtful connotations to other people, so I particularly don't use those terms of course but I've just learned to let it not bother me because at the end of the day it's a projection of their own insecurities and that's out of my control so if you want to sit there and say you know you're not a real drag queen or you're a or whatever I okay okay diva have a good time like I'm not gonna let it get under my skin like I know I'm beautiful I know I'm good I know I'm happy doing what I'm doing so sorry you're insecure <laughs> I get harassed so often. This is something I'm actually, I'm really glad that you asked because even in queer spaces like gay bars or drag shows, I get harassed. Whether I'm in drag or out of drag, someone always has something to say to me. People who are fascinated with my breastplate, my titties, and they'll come up and just touch without asking. I had a guy try to smack me on the the other day in drag. Luckily my purse was in the way, but it's just drag is not consent to touch other people. If you can't handle your liquor, don't get drunk at a drag show because we don't want to deal with it. I've also, you know, faced problems going out in public, in or out of drag, and faced various kinds of bigotry, more specifically in drag, because I personally, I like a really dynamic photo. I like really dynamic videos. I like to go to weird, obscure places and take these photos and videos. I've gone to record stores, I filmed in literal dumpsters, I film in my apartment complex most of the time, which is very not private, <laughs> and um, you know, I've had people drive by when I'm literally sitting in a dumpster and yell if I'm okay. I remember when I was filming my drowning look in a public pool, multiple people came by and was like, is she okay? Like freaking the hell out. I've had people in a record store that I was filming a look in talk, they knew I could hear, and they were, they were talking loud enough that I could hear about how I was too inappropriate to be in a public place. I mean, my here and here were covered, so I don't know what was inappropriate, just the fact that I was in drag. People can definitely be bigots, and I've experienced a good amount of that because I put myself in situations that are a little bit more high risk. I don't think I've ever been a victim of a hate crime. It's more just vague harassment, thankfully. Knock on, knock on wood. Is there wood on this chair? Yeah. <laughs> What's next for me? Um, Drag Showdown is about to air. That's a lovely YouTube competition. I have back filmed all of it, so that is on my horizons of being released. I'm really excited for everybody to see. And in May, I will be moving to Connecticut. So hopefully I will be able to expand my platform and start performing and re-establishing connections in Connecticut. I mean, I've already started. My partner, um, a drag queen by the name of Glass Stain, currently resides in Connecticut and I have a lot of lovely connections through him and his friends that I have also been able to befriend. Um, so that's really what's up and coming for me in regards to drag. I mean, I can't audition for Drag Race, so <laughs> I think that's, for now, all that's on my horizons. If you were to be given the opportunity to tell your younger self one word of advice, what would it be? Stop being so scared of being yourself. Because something that has held me back from a lot of opportunities was fear of being authentically myself. 
whether it's hiding in the water polo locker rooms making out with some chick because I was too scared to tell anybody I was bi, or preventing myself from doing drag because I didn't think it was accepted. I wish that I had just been more vocal and expressive about the thoughts that were in my head and I would tell younger Chai, just go for it. Do everything you put, everything that crosses your sweet little brain, just do it because that's how you discover yourself. To all the little folks going through having strange thoughts in their head, whether it be pertaining to gender identity, gender expression, sexuality, desire to do things that are atypical from what the norm or whatever is, live a life that is truly authentic to yourself. Even if you feel currently happy with what you're doing and how you're expressing or conveying or portraying yourself, just make sure that you're always doing what is true to you and true to your heart because you can't change what's happened.